Well, if there was anything that was not included in that very quick rundown, I'm very sure that it will be included in John Hodgman's new book, More Information Than You Require. Uh, you probably know John Hodgman well from his previous book, The Areas of My Expertise, and also uh, his work on television and radio. We're very happy to have him here on TBTL. John Hodgman, hi. Hello. I'm very glad to be here. Um, uh, in this book, More Information Than You Require, uh, you write a lot about uh, the presidential election and some really interesting Yes, did you know this is a presidential election here? Um, I, it was funny, I went to a party on Tuesday night. Oh, really? Which I thought was a swingers party. I love parties. So I dropped my keys in the fishbowl. Fantastic. It turns out it was an election party. I know, it turns out that that key, that key was the key that put Barack Obama over the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they say... Uh, your key doesn't matter. Every key <laughs> That's matters. That's how they do elections here in Seattle, actually. <laughs> um, well, one of the, the, uh, the predictions that you made yes. about the presidential election... So I'm delighted to talk about this material, which is no longer timely. Well, I, I, I'm I, thrilled I, that you were interested in what happened in the past. Well, I, I feel like it's important, though, I mean, that we let people know that uh, not everything in here has been proven out, including your prediction yes. that there would probably be a hook-handed president this time around. That, that's, that, that, that well, was there were nine presidents who had hooks for hands, as you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Jefferson, both Roosevelt's, mm -hmm. uh, the second Bush. He, but, you know, so he would seem more folksy. He had his hook mm -hmm. replaced with a chainsaw. He was, a lot of people said he was the president you'd want to go have a hook-handed beer with. Exactly so, yeah. It really exactly. worked for him. Exactly. Um, a lot of this book is uh, expanding on little things you alluded to yes. in the first book, Areas of My Expertise. I am fulfilling promises made that I made to the reader that they didn't care about, that I did. Well, and one of the things that you spend a considerable amount of time on uh, is the mole men. The mole men, the history, the of, history mole men of mole men. And, um, in, underneath the United States of America. There is still a lot of mole manic culture in Virginia, such as the gentlemanly habit of feeling each other's face when people meet. Oh, um, and also the famous Mulmanic Palace of Monticello. I've I've, I've had that experience you know, when I've traveled through parts of Virginia. Yes, where people have greeted even, me like Mary Ingalls from right. a later episode of exactly. Little House on the Prairie. Even fully sighted Virginians mm -hmm. who do not live underground, or hiss and have hideous tusks, will occasionally feel each other's face. That is an old Mulmanic tradition you know, forged underground in the dark. Hmm. And that was the only way you could recognize somebody. I was also very curious to read what a, what a, when you get a few moles together, what that's called. A parlor. A parlor of yeah. mole men. Not moles. They have nothing to do with moles. It's, it's interesting to see the, the molemanic uh, inspirations that have really taken and right. those that have not. In the ca but I'll tell you something. In the caverns and, and great cities like Molemansylvania, underneath the earth where the mole men live, they don't even have single dollars anymore. It's all toonies down there. The mole men, on the other hand, are mole men of reason. They are they embody the Enlightenment ideals that we commonly ascribe falsely to the French. They are citizens. Mm -hmm. um, they are um, the well. They are they are the Jeffersonian ideal of a member of democracy. A you know a yeoman farmer of glowing mushrooms, who you know independently lives beneath the earth, surviving on his own means. Wow, and that was a sentence. Well, it was indeed. You can say it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a sentence, but a palindrome. A sentence. 